Hello Sagittarius, welcome to Monarch Intuition and today I'm going to be doing your personality assessment with the tarot cards. So what we're going to be talking about is how to go from the Eight of Wands, which is your lowest base self, to the Knight of Wands, which is your highest base self, following the Temperance and the Wheel of Fortune as your two guiding tarot cards that can help you gain clarity within your life. So. When we look at the Eight of Wands, what we have to understand that this is fast moving energy. It's very impulsive, kind of like Aries, okay? Now, here's the thing about being very impulsive like Aries. It causes a lot of problems for you and for other people within your life. Now, the problem is, Sagittarius, is that when things go wrong, they generally go wrong for you, as opposed to Aries being a cardinal sign, it changes other people's lives. So being a mutable sign, when things go wrong, it changes your life very drastically. So the Eight of Wands is all about gaining impulse control right here because you don't want to move too quickly into a situation without having all of the facts. That translates into the Nine of Wands right here. This represents someone who's been bruised and battered. This is someone who's run into a situation without thinking the consequences through and got really hurt along the way. As you can see, it is the person who got hurt, not anyone else in the picture. So this is very good representation of, say, the Knight of Wands rushing into a battle and not having full clarity as to what to do. So when we look at this Nine of Wands energy, what we have to understand is that you might blame the universe for what has happened to you when it was your own fault, okay? And that's what the Angel of Temperance wants you to understand right here. The Angel of Temperance is a guardian angel. It is your guardian angel. The guardian angel is not there to protect you from everything, you know, the minor bumps and scrapes of life. It's there to protect your life. The angel will still allow you to suffer the consequences of certain things within your life, but it's not going to allow you to perish and die, right? Now, what we have to look at with this Ten of Wands, this is you potentially being over-concerned with all the burdens within your life, all right? The Ten of Wands, is, this is a very heavy burden. This can be representation by the Eight and Nine right here. When we look at this card, we have to remember that this person is trying to do everything himself now. It's kind of like, you know, everyone lets me down. Everyone doesn't follow through with the situation, so I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to be stubborn. The problem is, Sagittarius, is what you have to understand is what is meant for you is meant for you. Sometimes you have to drop a few of the wands and allow other people to pick those up along the way carry what is important and what is necessary for you. Only one wand is actually necessary, okay? So it's kind of like you're trying to do all of these different things within your life and you rush into situations without thinking them fully through. But once you think the situation fully through, you'll be like, that's not even meant for me. Those situations are not supposed to be in my life whatsoever. Because when we look at uh, Sagittarius the centaur, um, or Chiron the centaur, which is what Sagittarius is based off of. Chiron was a healer. He was a prophet, a sage, right? And he taught other people. He taught people impulse control. He taught them how to shoot one arrow and potentially kill three people at one time. It was not about waste. It was all about the right moment, the perfect timing. And that's what the angel of temperance represents. An angel coming out of the sky to wrap its wings around you at the right moment. Not waiting, you know, for X, Y, and Z to happen, but at the right moment, okay? And that's what you have to understand about Sagittarian energy. It's like it cannot be intent in different directions. You can't send out just eight different arrows and let them land wherever they're supposed to be because the Eight of Wands is a very chaotic card. This person just sends out eight arrows or eight wands into the air. They're all on fire, and wherever they land, they land, right? That causes a lot of problems with the Nine of Wands right here. It has to be very focused and very controlled. Chiron, the centaur, was a very controlled being. He taught medicine. He also taught prophecy. Those things take a lot of time. In order to create medicine, you have to gather all of the herbs. You have to grow the herbs in the first place. Then you have to take them where you're going to go. You have to get the apothecary to grind them down, blah, 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 right? So... When we look at the Nine of Wands, what we have to understand is this is perfect timing, rushing in at the right moment to save a situation, okay? Sometimes other people are going to fall before you get into the battle, before you get into the fight. Now, you might want to save all those people, but you have to understand that sometimes it's okay to be a little bit greedy within your life, okay? I know that that's a very difficult sounding thing like to be self-serving Sagittarius but what you have to understand is that say for instance um in the old civil war the way that they did the way that they fought battles even throughout history 
they lined people up into columns and then this column would shoot and kill the people in this line and then these people you know standing up behind them would then shoot at this line and it was you know very just chaotic it was just like controlled chaos these people would go down then these people would go down it was like a stack of dominoes the people at the back they actually had to fight with their bayonets and that's kind of what this represents right here is charging into the battle after everything has already fallen apart after all of the main forces have gone down I know that's a very difficult kind of grotesque concept to think about Sagittarius but that's what it stands for all right rushing in at the right moment allowing other people to have their downfalls allowing other people's you know situations to play out you can't save these people but you can win the battle if that makes sense. That's what the angel of temperance wants you to understand is that you have to view yourself in higher regard. You have to view your energy in higher regard, okay? Because Chiron had all of these different things that he could do. He was very knowledgeable. He taught, I believe it was Achilles. He taught one of the other people in the Greek mythos as well. So when we look at this wheel of fortune energy, what you have to understand about it is that it is the cycle of life, all right? Cycle of life goes around and around. It's even re represented by T, A, R, and then ending back on T, so tarot. This represents Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, not Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, sorry, but Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius energy as well. So spinning through the cycles of life, understanding that you have to see all the fixed energy and what they bring to the table and then learn how to draw and pull from those fixed energies to create who you are, which is a mutable sign, someone that is ever-changing. You can actually go through all four different elements right here. Sagittarius are kind of like the shapeshifters of the zodiac, if that makes sense. So when I see this energy right here, Sagittarius, is that you have to really think critically about situations and see what is meant for you and what is not meant for you. Why is the angel holding you back as well? Because there can be many setbacks within your life, Sagittarius. The angel can always be holding you back. You might think that these are bumps in the road, that these are terrible setbacks, and you're just like, I wish I could move forward. I wish I could drive forward. And then when you push past, you know, divine protection right here, the divine will take its hand away from you for a second, allow you to get bruised and battered, and then save you again, and show you why you have to follow this divine path right here, because it's saving you for the right moment. Kind of like, you know, that battle scenario about all the soldiers falling down, right? The ones in the back, those are the ones on the horses with the bayonets. Those are the ones that charged at people when all the main forces went down. Saving those people for last was very important to a battle, okay? Because those were people who also had to, like, man the cannons, man all the other things. Those were, like, um, important people in the back. So when we look at this energy right here, what is the universe saving you for? What does the universe want to align you to? Because there are multiple different things that Sagittarians can do and can be very adept at doing within their lives. All right, as I said, prophecy, medicine, scholarly work, um, even, you know, for example, as I said, shooting the arrows and getting three people like marksmanship. Those are things that Sagittarians rule. So what is the universe trying to connect you to that's going to help, you know, kind of in a way save the world? All right, because you might have something that's very good, a skill. You might have a vision within your mind, but maybe the universe is not ready for that. Have you ever thought about it like this? very good representation. There are artists who make things, right? But they don't become famous until after they pass away. And people are like, wow, they were real visionaries. They're like 200 years ahead of their time. And then their art becomes really popular. Wouldn't you want your art to be popular while you're alive? So that way you could have, you know, the recognition for it. So that way you could speak on what it actually means. Because people are sometimes, you know, they just give meaning to artwork of people who've passed away. They don't know what it actually represents. That's what the universe is trying to say for you. You have something very important within your life, Sagittarians all do, especially if they have it within their um, north node, if they have it in their moon, if they have it in their um, Mars. Sagittarians have a lot of important things to do on this planet. So what is the universe trying to drive you into? And if you have a highly aspected Sagittarius placement, how does that blend into your life, all right? Because remember, Sagittarius is all about teaching and hitting, you know, the hammer on, or what, how's that saying go? Hammer on the head? I think that's how that goes. It's all about, you know, being precise. So that's what you have to understand. You and Virgo share a lot of energy with one another about being um, 
very perfect in the way you want something to be constructed. Now, when you're younger, you might not like that. You might not like this order and whatever, this confinement. However, the universe is binding you, showing you why you need to move forward in a certain way, okay? So think of it as protection and think of it as um, you're spinning through your wheel of life. You can't rush the situation. Why would you want to rush through your life? Life is a journey, and that's what the Wheel of Fortune represents. It represents, um, on this quadrant right here, it's supposed to be spring, so Taurus season. And then you have um, Leo season, which is summer. And then you have Scorpio season, gosh, I can't say it, season, which is fall, and then Aquarius, which is winter. So you're traveling through all the phases of your life. You might be going through, you know, this springtime energy where you want to... Um, where you just want to rush into situations. But once you hit that summertime energy where it's that kind of lull within your life, you're going to look back on your past and think of how many situations you survived, how lucky you are to be alive, thinking about all the things you've done in your past and say, you know what, maybe I should make a better choice. Maybe when I'm going into this Scorpio fall season of my life, I'm going to be very knowledgeable and very well versed in what I have to do within my life. So don't rush it, Sagittarius. Understand that you are on a very straight and narrow path. In fact, when you look at this in the background, there is a very straight, narrow waterfall flowing down. Um, the angel's feet, one is in the water, one is on land, and it kind of represents, you know, the duality of nature, the mutability of Sagittarius energy. It's a fire sign, but as you can see right here, it's alchemizing with the water and the cups. The um, eye right there, the all-seeing eye, or the eye of providence, is being represented as uh, following divine law, divine order, which is um, Leonian energy. So following these rules, following these paths, because if you want to turn the water into fire, which is like an impossible feat, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of knowledge, a lot of transcendental knowledge, if that makes sense. So anyway, Sagittarius, I hope you enjoyed this reading, and I'll talk to you later.